Welcome to worship with the First Baptist Church of Henderson, North Carolina. We invite you to use the worship bulletin to follow along with today's service, which can be found on our website, fbchenderson.net. Click on Worship Bulletins under the Worship tab. Today's bulletin will be the first link on the list. This morning, we gather together in spirit to celebrate Ascension. Although it seems strange to say that we celebrate the moment our Savior leaves this physical realm, but while the Ascension is an ending, it is also a beginning, a door opening into a future that leads to our own salvation. It is this beginning that we celebrate today. So now we invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Let us pray. In the quietness of this time, we're so thankful for our connection to you, God. Quiet our minds, our thoughts, so we can listen to your word and hear what you want us to hear this morning. God, you changed the world so that we might know love in its fullest. May our lives reflect yours in ways that leave no doubt whom we serve. Be with all of our nurses, doctors, policemen, paramedics, truck drivers, farmers, mail carriers, and all retail workers that are working for all of us every day. Be with all of the residents in nursing and rehab facilities that don't understand what's going on. Please bring a peace to them. Help us to remember Hope is alive. It is all around us. Hope shines through the clouds, to the mountains, to the tops, and journeys over the high peaks, knowing that on the other side, a green valley awakes. Thank you for always being there for us, every day, for your never-ending grace. Transform us by your love, so that we may grow into our true best self ready to serve and love others. Help us to trust that your love never ends. We ask all of this in your precious name. Amen.
call to worship. Our God reigns, clothed with robes of majesty and armed with strength. God holds the world and our lives securely. This is the God to whom we give our lives, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. Come, let us offer worship and praise to our God. Our Psalter lesson today comes from Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is King over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray together. God of past, present, and future, hear us as we confess. Holy, majestic one, who sits enthroned in the heavens, receive us in mercy. God, very present and personal, pardon our failures. We confess that we often prefer to stand gazing into the heavens than to allow our eyes to rest on the pain and brokenness that lies around us. We would rather bask in thoughts of your triumphal return than to engage the struggle for holiness, justice, and mercy. Renew our hearts and help us as we keep an eye towards the sky to never lose sight of what is here and now. Teach us to worry less about what we shall be and more about who we should be. Help us to love our world as we love the idea of the world to come. We pray in the name of Jesus, Son of Man and Son of God, who came, lived, died, was raised, and has ascended to your right hand. Amen. Friends, hear this good news and see the grace of God. We are forgiven. We are free to go and live in the light of love. The epistle lesson today is from Ephesians chapter 1, 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him on his right hand in the heavenly places. For above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm preaching today because Dr. Kava recently had surgery, and we wish him well in his recovery. Also, I want to tell you that the last time I preached from this pulpit, I had the same color of hair, but I sure do have a lot more today, not having had a haircut in six weeks, but I'm probably along with the rest of you. Glad you're here today and being a part of our worship service. The gospel lesson is from the gospel according to Luke. 
chapter 24, beginning with verse 44. Then he said to them, these are the very things I told you about while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the writings of the prophets and the Psalms have come true. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, this is what is written the Messiah must suffer and must rise from death three days later. And in his name, the message about repentance and the forgiveness of sins must be preached to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and I myself will send upon you what my Father has promised. But you must wait in the city until the power from above comes down upon you. Then he led them out of the city as far as Bethany, where he raised his hands and blessed them. And as he was blessing them, he departed from them and was taken into heaven. They worshiped him and went back into Jerusalem, filled with great joy, and spent all their time in the temple giving thanks to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today is Ascension Sunday, but I wish it were Christmas Sunday or the first Sunday in Lent, for these describe down to earth experiences. But Ascension Sunday, well, it's kind of up in the air, isn't it? Today, though, ascension refers to Jesus ascending into heaven after the death and resurrection. But there are concerns about this theme, for it seems to be that so many want to think of it as having a literal interpretation. Maybe so. Virtually every artist paints Jesus as rising from the earth as if he were a rocket ship headed into space. Some show that person holding on to the feet of Jesus as if trying to hold him back or maybe catch a ride into heaven. But there are not many details about the ascension, yet in a word, it is the time between the death and resurrection of Jesus and Jesus through God's ultimate victory in the world. As an analogy, look at it this way. In two weeks, June 6, we will commemorate the anniversary of D-Day. That day in World War II when 150,000 Allied troops and at least one from our congregation, I understand, stormed the beaches of Normandy and Omaha. A great loss of life, yet driving Hitler even closer to surrender. Though V-Day would come in Germany a year later, and in between D-Day and V-Day, the war of World War II raged on. In our text, Jesus speaks of his coming and crucifixion, his death, as it were, D-Day. Religious, religious leaders unleashed all their fury and anger on him with the permission of the political leaders. But then in verse 50, Jesus led them out of the city to Bethany, blessed them, departed from them into heaven. And in between these verses, he says that there is a message of repentance and forgiveness to be preached by those who are left on the earth, those of his disciples in particular. That is to say, V-Day, victory is not yet complete. D-Day D -day for Jesus was when his enemies put him to death. 
Luke says it was about 12 o'clock at noon and darkness came over the whole land until about three o'clock. We call it Good Friday. Theologians say it was the day when the battle was fought for our eternal safety. The late Harry Emerson Fosdick said, we are not acquainted with human sacrifice and the dripping of blood all over the place. So he put it this way, Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And so we could have a meaningful life here and hereafter. Telemachus was a fourth century Christian monk. He saw gladiators in the Colosseum in Rome putting slaves to death, sport, putting swords through their bodies just to please the emperor. Overcome with pain and what happened to Telemachus, he called out in the name of Christ, stop the killing. But words were not enough, so he climbed over the barrier into the arena whereupon a gladiator immediately pushed a sword into his body. At this, the crowd was stunned. Maybe slaves would be killed, but never before had a monk been put to death. Even the emperor took notice, later issued a ban on gladiators fighting in the arena and since 404 AD, there has not been a human put to death in the Roman Colosseum. One man made a difference. Telemachus was his name, and he did it in the name of another man, the man Jesus the Christ, who stood also against the principalities and powers that the world lived by. The Christ who calls us to know him and follow him, who gives us strength for life, and in this face of COVID-19 especially, or maybe a personal difficulty of your own, calls us to live in the power of Christ and his word. But, but by and large, most of the time, if we are not in some serious difficulty, the source of power and wisdom and safety is what the world offers us. We hear it every day from the White House, the State House, even the courthouse, the storehouse with its store of goods, and their message is, we will take care of you. You can trust us. Of course, we need human help in the face of what we're going through now. There is not anything that says we should not rely on those around us and for us, but the ultimate source of our strength will be found in a different place. Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann said, self-sufficiency is a myth we cannot secure ourselves. The biblical narrative over and over says our life depends on fidelity to the God we meet in Jesus Christ. Someone asked Dr. Brueggemann what he thought God is saying to America these days, and he answered in three words. It's very late. Is something going on in this country that we need to be more aware of are there things that need changing? Are we losing our way? Are we on the brink of an even greater disaster? We maybe need to heed those words from that eminent Old Testament scholar. It's very late. All the more reason to heed what God says to us. Karl Barth was perhaps the greatest theological teacher of the 20th century. Shortly before he died, he said, the last word which I have to say as a theologian is not a term like grace even, 
but a name, Jesus Christ. He is grace. What I have been concerned to do in my long life has been increasingly to emphasize this name. And it was not just an intellectual exercise. Listening to God made a difference in the way Bart lived his life. For one thing, he stood up to Hitler and refused to take an oath of allegiance against this wild man of the Nazis. Listening to God gave him courage. It can and will give us courage when we are willing to stand, as did Bart, as did Telemachus, as did Jesus the Christ, who would not go along with what was, but knew what needed to be, and was bent on doing his Father's will. The New Testament doesn't give us much detail about the ascension of Jesus, but it does tell us he still cares about the world he left. We are told that by Jesus, who said in our text, in my name the message of repentance and forgiveness of sins must be preached. There was still work for the disciples to do, and there is for us. We know the name John Wesley, but Charles Wesley is just as prominent in many ways, wrote many hymns, more than we can count. And in his hymn that we will sing in a little while, he wrote this stanza, Hail the day that sees him rise to his throne above the skies. Christ, a while to mortals given, reascends his native heaven. But then, but then notice this stanza, See, the heaven its Lord receives, yet he loves the earth he leaves. Though returning to his throne, still he calls the world his own. And in this in-between time, between D-Day in Jesus' death and complete victory V-Day, he calls us to follow on, to carry on his message and work, to preach repentance, to offer forgiveness to those, to those who are need in need of forgiveness. The Ascension Sunday could be a time when we commit ourselves to doing that or other things. Recommitting our lives to him, we go along so casually and sometimes forget whose we are and who we are to be following and what we are to be doing. John Maxwell, in his book, Be All You Can Be, tells of a Stanford University psychologist who did an experiment on productive attitudes. His thesis was we live for good results. We want to see something happen when we have worked at it. He asked a professional logger out in the western part of the United States for his help. He said, I'll pay you double to take your ax and use the blunt end to beat a log all day. The pay sounded good. The logger began his work for that day. But at noon, he quit. For half a day, he swung the blunt end of the ax at the log, but no more. Why, asked the psychologist. Because every time I move an ax, I need to see the chips fly. In other words, he needs to see some results. And Maxwell said, I'm convinced that many Christians are using the wrong end of the ax. They are not seeing chips fly. Although, if he were speaking today, he might say I'm wrong, at least in part, 
because as Tammy mentioned in the prayer, there are so many who are giving their time and effort and energy and are standing up on the front line, so to speak. And she called them those on the medical staff and those delivering our food and those helping in multiple ways. So chips are flying, but probably not to the extent that they need to be. But in this time between D-Day and V-Day and the Ascension, we are to have productive attitudes. But in this present time, I believe the ascended Christ would have us look at the Father, kneel before the Father, praise the Father, all of that to say we put our trust in God the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I wrote in a recent article in the dispatch, we are living in an age of anxiety. We are having difficulty that I need not elaborate on because we're all so much aware of it. And we need divine wisdom, not to say that a simple prayer to God will cause him to wipe away all of the virus. We need the help of all we can get, the medical staff included. But ultimately, we need to turn to our Heavenly Father for our needs. When I went off to college, on one occasion, I felt very much afraid. Now I don't have an idea why I was afraid during that time. But I carried my Bible with me, and I thought to turn to the back of the Bible and, and look up some words and find some scripture that might help me through this difficult time. I saw one that said something about helping to cope in times of tr trouble, and it said we need to trust in God. Psalm 56, 3. I turned to that in my Bible, and I immediately saw a check mark by that verse. My par parents had placed it there as I went off to school, knowing there would come a time when I would have some difficulty, when I would be anxious, even afraid. Our Heavenly Father knows there are times when we will be afraid and need the help that only he can give. When we are afraid during this time between earth and heaven, we can pray this prayer and we can say these words, what time I am afraid, I will put my trust in thee. That was more than 65 years ago. And I still remember seeing that verse and that check mark as if it were yesterday. It's a good word for us all to remember on this Ascension Sunday. Jesus ascended, but did he, not, he did not leave us helpless or alone. He came, as he said, he would not leave us without help and hope. I still wish this had been Christmas Sunday or the first Sunday of Lent but I hope something that was said about this ascension, this time between D-Day and V-Day, will keep us on track until God gives strength and guidance for our lives during these very difficult days. Amen.
Many times over the years, I have turned to the blessings of Jan Richardson for solace, for guidance, for encouragement. And today, as we prepare for our time of prayer, I want to share a blessing she wrote for Ascension 2013. A blessing that couldn't predict the future, but that has taken on more depth of meaning during our current season of life together. It is called Stay. I know how your mind rushes ahead, trying to fathom what could follow this. What will you do? Where will you go? How will you live? You will want to outrun the grief. You will want to keep turning toward the horizon watching for what was lost to come back, to return to you and never leave again. For now, hear me when I say, all you need to do is to still yourself, is to turn toward one another, is to stay. Wait and see what comes to fill the gaping hole in your chest Wait with your hands open to receive what could never come, except to what is empty and hollow. You cannot know it now, cannot even imagine what lies ahead, but I tell you the day is coming when breath will fill your lungs as it never has before. And with your own ears, you will hear words coming to you new and startling. You will dream dreams, and you will see the world ablaze with blessing. Wait for it. Still yourself. Stay. Let us pray together. Jesus, our friend, our guide, our savior, we long to ask you to stay. We long to ask you to dwell with us a little longer, to give us direction, to tell us more about your kingdom that is to come to this earth. But we have come to this day that we know you must go. But you go leaving us with the promise of your continued presence, presence through the Spirit, presence in flesh in each person who chooses to follow in your way. But we know we must stay in this space between your ascension and the time when all things will be made new. We stay in this space between because we know this is the place and the time to which you have called us. Show us the way forward. Show us what it means to love you and love our neighbors with abundance and without fear all by the power of your spirit. And Lord, just as we must stay in the in-between of your kingdom coming to earth, we know we must also stay in this season defined by dis-ease and sacrifice and distrust. Lord, we find it so hard to stay, to sit in this discomfort. We want to find a way out, any way out. But comforting spirit, we know there is no easy way out. No magic formula to make our lives go back to normal. And we confess that this brings us grief. But God, perhaps also it brings us hope. Hope for how we might recreate a more loving, kind, and generous society on the other side of this. Lord, who breathes life into dry bones, life feels like such a long ending and a long beginning all at the same time right now. Give us patience for your ongoing work in our world. Your spirit is in the midst of bringing new creation out of chaos, So give us imagination to join in this recreation. 
We do not know fully, so give us humility. And we do not experience life the same as our neighbor, so give us compassion. God of healing and wholeness, we pray for our community during this time of transition. Show us how to continue to see each other as your beloved, making decisions not just for ourselves, but for the well-being of everyone. Lord, you have gone, but we stay to be your hands and your feet by the power of the Spirit you have promised. And by the power of the Spirit, we pray now the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is absolutely no surprise when I say that music has for many, many years been one of the defining strands of this congregation's DNA. And I, for one, am most grateful that you have been particularly good stewards of it. From an incredibly dedicated and capable choir to the storied handbell program, to engaged congregational singing, to your commitment of time, resources, energy, and passion for equipping our youngest to be lifelong worshipers for decade after decade. You have cared for God's gift of music and you have nurtured it as a tool for formation. Each week there are a number of volunteers who have found a way to continue being good stewards of this God-given musical talent, even in the midst of all this craziness. In order to keep the number in the sanctuary at 10 or fewer each week when we record this service for you, we prepare the hymn singing that you hear afterwards with a quartet from our choir to be dubbed over later on stage at McGregor Hall. I wanted you to have a chance to see a bit of what this looks like and what these people are offering in worship, even when we can't be in person and even when it isn't particularly easy or safe to do so. So today we have the privilege of offering you an anthem for worship, the Renaissance composer Thomas Tallis's setting of Christ's promise to all of us. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever.
Our Father, we don't know just how late it is, but either way, early or late, we are thankful for your presence in our midst. And as we go from this place to the various things that we will do this day, we pray that you will cause your face to shine upon us, that you will be gracious unto us, and that in a way that we can hardly imagine these days, you will grant us peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.